So as part of our ESF workshop on representation of future generations, we have the pleasure today of having Emily Gaillard, who did her PhD in 2008 on future generations and private law. So she has this very special feature of being of coming from private law and being interested in future generations, where usually it's going to be people from public law who focus on these issues. She won a prize from the Academy of Moral and Political Sciences for this uh, work, and she's now a lecturer at the University of Caen. So we, we decided to, to ask her a few questions about her work. One, one question um, has to do with the connection between the three generations of human rights and the idea of rights of future generations. So, Emily, could you tell us a little bit more about this, about this idea of a fourth generation of human rights and about the connection between generations of rights and rights of generations? Sure. First of all, I shall begin to expose briefly the, the various generations of human rights. To make it short, the first generations of human rights arose uh, in the 18th century. That this is individual human rights freedom of speech, um, and the second generation of human rights rose at uh, the very end of the Second World War, and there are more social and economical rights. Uh, the two first generation of human rights rose from um, the nation state level. And the very difference is there has been a jump, an intellectual jump, when the concept of human rights has been transposed at the universal level. And that occurred in the 70s uh, when we imagine a right to uh, the environment, a right to uh, enjoy a human, human can patrimony. And um, the fourth generation of human rights uh, would be, to Professor Marcus Adams' point of view, uh, the right to have a human condition, that is to say, the right to be real humans and not to be ha have been transformed. Um, how can we put these fourth uh, levels of generations of human rights with the concept of future generations? The latest uh, two, uh, third and fourth generations of human rights have been um, has have emerged at the international level, and they have a, a very wide uh, scope <laughs> in the temporal. Um, it is also transnational and transtemporal human rights, and this brings a very um, a kind of uh, a new paradigm for human rights. Once you have made the intellectual jump. Uh, to, in order to think about future generations, then you can transgenerationalize the first generation of human rights and the second ones. This can be very po becomes possible. So one of your other ideas is uh, a focus on temporal non-discrimination. So some people claim, and uh, I am um, I'm part of these people, that. It, it, it is philosophically difficult to defend the idea of present rights of future people, but it, it doesn't matter too much because we can defend the idea of current rights of future people. You argue that actually we should defend the idea of current rights of future people. Can you expand a little bit on this? Well, it's a little bit more complex. Uh, with the principle of temporal non-discrimination, I would like to emphasize on the fact that when our current actions is really uh, putting future generations into danger, we should think uh, about them. And uh, if you do not uh, think about them, then you commit an abuse of power on future generations. And the principle of temporal non-discrimination doesn't have a general vocation, doesn't doesn't mean that we should, for every action, to put the future generation's interest into the scene. But when you, uh, you, you make an action very, very dangerous for future generations, then 
future generations enter in the scope of democracy of law and uh, it, it is legitimate to think about them. Okay, and let me ask you a third question. Um, as in other countries, there have been initiatives in France regarding uh, specific institutions aiming at defending or promoting the interests of future generations. Could you give us uh, an overview of what has been done in the past and what is currently being done in France in that respect? Well, in France in 1993, uh, Conseil for the Future Generation has been created in order to give advice for the executive power. But concretely, it doesn't really function because I think it has been held by pioneers of future generations, uh, pro protectors, that is to say, Commandant Cousteau or Edith, Professor Edith Brandweiss. But still, this experience um, gives uh, the path and opens various paths uh, which is uh, uh, actually uh, being <laughs> experimented. Um, now, we are uh, assisting at uh, the emerging of various kinds of institutions or um, conseil which has uh, the, the very mission to open-minded parliamentaries or executives or the judiciary uh, power. Uh, in France, we had a uh, Conseil National, uh, Comité Consultatif National d'Éthique, who has, uh, who, who, <laughs> je suis désolée. Tu veux qu'on recommence Ouais, là, celle-là, okay. ouais. On peut couper Bah ben non, on a Non, non, so we'll cut the last bit, which we start again, ok <laughs> Take a pen. Ouais. C'est quoi déjà la question Donc la question c'était sur euh, les institutions. Donc tu parles de, de cette institution dans les années 70, c'est ça Ah oui, d'accord. Et puis euh, tu nous donnes peut-être deux exemples de ce qui se fait aujourd'hui D'accord. Ok, so we start again. So for the institutions... Oh, yeah. ok, I'm going to state the, okay. the question again. As in other countries, there have been initiatives in France regarding setting up specific institutions aiming at defending the interests of future generations. Could you give us an, an idea of what has been done in the past and what is currently being done in this respect? Sure. There has been in France in 1993 a uh, Conseil pour les générations futures. It was a, a committee with a personality who has the work to give advice in order to enlighten the executive power. Now we have a kind of other institution which has um, the mission to enlighten parliamentaries and uh, for on bioethics topics, for example, or in new technological problems. When you have um, the curiosity to ask what is done in other juridical systems, you find various kind of institutions uh, which uh, have m for work to defend future generations' interests in F Finland, in Israel, and also we had the experience of an advancement for future generations in Hungary. Even though the latest, the latest for experience is no more uh, actual, I think there is a process and we are, uh, we are seeing a kind of emerging transgenerational democracy, that is to say that there is a renewed game of powers and counter-powers which integrate deeply the, in the protection of the interests of future generations. Thank you very much, Emily.